this baptismal life. Look, here is water. Here is the water of life. Alleluia. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Look, here is water. Please join me in the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Gracious and glorious God, you have chosen us as your own, and by the powerful name of Christ, you protect us from evil. By your spirit, transform us and your beloved world that we may find our joy in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated, and we will join in God is Here, page 526.
First reading comes from Acts chapter 1. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit, through David, foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share of this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us here during all that time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us. One of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two, Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. When they, then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading comes from 1 John chapter 5. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things that you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 17th chapter, beginning in verse 6. Jesus prayed, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given to me is from you. For the words that you gave me, I have given to them, and they have received them and know the truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your, in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the word ha has hated them, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask that you ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. This is the gospel of our Lord. A couple of years ago, 
I don't know if you remember, there were, were a group of African girls taken by terrorists from a school in Africa. Our church covered the cross with the names of the girls that were taken. We really thought and prayed that these girls would be returned to their family. Well, weeks and months and years have passed. Some of those girls have been returned home. All of them uh, have been raped. Some of them ended up staying as husbands to the terrorists. Some of the girls were killed, never returned home. Their parents never got to know where their bodies were. I struggled with this because I left the cross and all of those names up praying and praying and praying that those girls would be returned. And isn't that what we're taught? If you pray, God will answer your prayers. God is in control of everything. And so if we pray and we ask and we manipulate God and we do bargaining and perhaps we'll get exactly what we want. I finally ended up taking the names of the girls off the cross. We had them on pieces of paper that looked like butterflies. And I have those names still in my basement in a box. Sometimes we don't get the answers to our prayers. And that's very difficult for me because we're not really taught that. We have people every week on our prayer list and, and we pray for them. We pray for healing for people who have cancer. We pray for missing children. We pray for couples that their marriages will be made stronger. We pray for the lost. And sometimes we just don't get the answers to the prayers that we want. So then does that mean that God's in, not in control of things? And when we tell people we're going to pray for them and we say, you know, they have cancer, oh, we'll hold you in prayer. Did God give them the cancer? Was that God's will? Was it God's will that those young girls were taken from that school? If God is in control, why do these things happen after all? When I was in seminary, one of my professors, and I might have told you this story already, one of my professors, uh, we were talking about prayer. And he said, why is it that we pray? Do we pray because we want to change God's mind? Do we really think that as we're praying, we can change God's mind on any given situation? Well, at that time I did. Yes, I asked God to bring healing where healing can be and wholeness. And I hope that when God hears my prayers and the prayers of everybody here, that perhaps he'll lift up and he'll heal. My professor said, we pray because prayer changes us. I didn't quite understand that until my uncle was in the process of dying. He was getting close to 90 years old and his body became more and more frail. His memory started kind of going. He could no longer care for himself. We ended up putting him in a nursing home and this was a man that was very vibrant, always traveled up until his probably last two years of life where he was in constant pain with his back. And it was really hard to watch him go downhill. And every time he would go to see a doctor, we'd hope and pray that healing would happen and Uncle Dave would be restored to us just as he'd always been. We weren't ready to let him go. But over time, we watched how he was changing. And life was losing its meaning. He had people who had to diaper him had to feed him, and he was no longer Uncle Dave. So the prayer started to change. God, we don't want to see him suffer. Please take him home. End his suffering. Stop the pain. It wasn't that we didn't want him around anymore. It wasn't that we didn't trust God to do what God needed to do. God was working on us to teach us how to let go. 
and how to trust that everything would be okay. Now in our gospel reading tonight, we hear Jesus praying for his disciples. And you know, we know that Jesus didn't get answers to his prayers that always he wanted all the time, right? He was in the garden. He was saying, hey, take this away from me. I don't want to go through this. But whatever your will is, let it be done. Jesus got to that point, that trust with God, that whatever was going to happen, God was going to be in the midst of it all. And that even when our prayers aren't answered the way we want, even when we can't understand why we got the cancer diagnosis, or why a loved one that we loved got killed in a car accident, even though we can't wrap our minds around tragedy, we pray that God is in the midst of it. And it's in that prayer that we see answers. Now we know many of the disciples, <coughs> excuse me, that Jesus prayed for ended up being martyred. But we also know that their road leading to their martyrdom was filled with sharing the good news. They did what Jesus called them to do. And they trusted that God would be with them even in their martyrdom. Because God does not leave or forsake us even when we feel abandoned. Even when we feel our prayers haven't been heard. They have been. Because God is faithful. Amen. Thank you for such a powerful message. Please join us in the song, I Come With Joy, page 482. Please join me in the reading of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of intercession. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. God of love, bless mothers and mothering people in our lives. Comfort those who miss their mom, moms who grieve, and those who never knew a loving mother. God of grace. God of healing, Bless health care workers and the skills they offer to help those in need. Please bring relief for those suffering in body and spirit. May they find relief by remembering you give us the strength to cope with our struggles. Today we pray for Amy, Anne, Arnold, Becky, Beverly, Bonnie, Brayden, Caden, Corinne, Darla, Dave, Dave, David, Denise, Gloria, Jack, Jackie, Jaden, James O, Jerome, Jerry, Karen, Christy, Larry, Mary, Nancy, Nathan, Patty, Rachel, Sandy, Scott, Yvonne, and will. And please include in your prayers the family of Deb Hintz, God of grace. Lord, you have created a world that provides for all our needs. Help us be good stewards of your creation, God of grace. God, you give us more strength and love to face our challenges in life than we realize. Provide that strength to all who are facing anxiety from discrimination, bullying, or any injustice. Guide each of us to help however we can. God of grace. Gracious God, we pray for humility. It is easy to take credit for our abilities and forget it is you working through us that makes all things possible. May we always turn our eyes and hearts toward those in need. God of grace. Hope-giving shepherd, guide the lighters of nations to strive to care for those in need and to lead with a servant's heart, striving to compromise their differences with peaceful coexistence as a primary objective. God of grace. Please join me in the last petition. With everlasting thanks and joy, for your love and forgiveness. We ask you to be with us till we meet again. This week, help us to take every opportunity to be thankful for the blessings of each day. Help us to pay attention to how best we can be a gift to others. May we approach each day with soul, serving others, uplifting lives. We ask all in the name of your dear Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Time for the offering.
please join me in the offering prayer. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We come now to a time in which we gather together and we hear the story, the story that our hearts know so well, the stories we teach our children about Jesus gathering with his disciples during the Passover meal. We know that Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, passed it to his disciples and said, take and eat, this is my body broken for you. As often as you eat of the bread, remember me. Likewise, he took the cup, raised it up, asked blessings upon it, and then passed it to his disciples and said, take and drink, this is the cup of the new covenant, my blood shed for you. For the remission of sin, as often as you drink of the cup, remember me. But there are other feeding stories in the Bible, and I was inspired by your, your prayers of intercession, in which your congregation just read together how you are tools of God's love and grace and mercy out into the world. You do the work of Christ. The story I remember this evening is uh, told in the Gospels, uh, and the number varies, but Jesus was gathered and teaching with his disciples, and the lunchtime came, and the people were hungry, and the disciples said to Jesus, send them away, for we don't have enough for them to eat. And Jesus looked at his disciples, and do you remember what he said? You feed them. You do it. In another gospel account, there was a little boy sitting among the crowd who had some bread and some fish. And they were brought to Jesus, and Jesus prayed over them just as he did that communion meal. And the bread was sent out, and the fish was sent out, and it fed, more, it fed everybody there, and there was more than enough. Because with God, there is always more. In fact, the Celtic people called God the more. So now we come and we share bread and cup. And we trust that God is filling us with his spirit so that we go out into the world and we feed the hungry. We give hope to those who are in despair. We feed the bodies and souls of people that we interact with every single day. You do it because you are filled with Christ. Holy and loving God, we ask that you bless the bread, this gift of bread and cup that they become for us. Christ within us, around us, among us. Inspire us to do his work. Let us join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The risen Christ is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. Come and eat at God's table.
Shepherd and God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and Friend. Amen. Amen. Some announcements that I wanted to share. <coughs> we do have flowers in the back. I'm sure you've seen the beautiful carnations when you came in. That was for Mother's Day. Feel free to take a flower with you. Um, we do have the Sunday school and the graduate service coming up this Sunday. It is one service at 930. And you are welcome to stay. We have a picnic, I believe, Ron, right? Okay. So encouraged to come for that and then the next time communion will be offered is Wednesday June 5th at 6 p.m. and then Sunday June 9th at at um, I would think it's 9 30 it says 6 p.m. but I'm thinking it's 9 30 um, food pantry needs for May are tuna and pasta sauce and the food pantry um, wants are toothpaste and toothbrushes. So if you can donate, that would be great. Um, we're already starting to look ahead to the 2023-2024 school year for Sunday school. Um, if you want to share your talents, please advise. Um, we definitely would love that. And does anyone have any other announcements this evening? OK. So we will sing our final hymn for tonight, Go My Children With My Blessing, page 542. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, it's 543. Sorry about that. <laughs> Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Do you wish to do the blessing? Listen? Do you wish to do the blessing? The God of... Oh, I'm sorry. Do you wish to do the blessing? I'll do the blessing. Yeah. All right. 
Alleluia, go in peace, rejoice and be glad. Praise be to God. Alleluia.